in here we've got some animals okay we have multiple actually a lot of animals in here no they're not tarantulas and yeah i'm gonna be using this well i'm gonna try to be opening the box with this i don't know in some kind of spoon ice cream spoon but this looks promising so let's see if this works oh it actually did yo this thing is awesome Woohoo! Check that out! <sighs> Damn! Who says plastic can cut stuff? One last part, you guys. Let's go. And we've got our box opened. Just in time. Okay, I just opened the box the other way around. I'm supposed to be unboxing it from the underside of this. But yeah, I got it open anyway. So you can already see stuff crawling inside. That may give you a quick clue on what is in here. I know it looks disgusting, like, ugh. It's just nasty down there. But look at what we've got. Okay, whatever it is, it is nasty. I mean, there's there's a dead one over here and over there. I mean, like, what? Let's, let's open this and see what's going on in here. <laughs> there's even one stuck to the tape. There you go. Now, we're gonna have to... Oh, let's smell this thing. Oh, it doesn't smell good at all. Okay, so these, if you guys don't know, are Turkestan cockroaches. Yep, you guys may know that I used to keep Turkestan cockroaches. Well, actually, I still do. But my colony isn't doing very well because they've been inbreeding for years. So I thought of getting a whole bunch of new ones and restarting an entire colony because mine if you guys remembered I had tons I had a ton of these roaches and they just eventually died off this is gross like there are dead ones down there as you can see and well oh look at that they are all around the place so apparently this is supposed to be a hundred grams of them but looking at this, I don't even know, is this even 100 grams? Did the guy count 100 grams as in including the egg crates or just the roaches? I don't know, but hello. Hello. I'm not quite sure if he counted with the egg crate, but the roaches, hey, get back in. Oh yeah, look at that. She's carrying an egg sac. She will drop that and in about 30 to 40 days, that egg sac will hatch out to about 30 to 50 babies. Pretty cool, I know. But yeah, we're gonna see how these guys do. Look at that, they're all under here. They're all around. Okay, for these guys, I'm gonna be preparing another enclosure or tub, if you will. And I don't know, we'll see how these guys do. Hopefully they breed prolifically for us. These make great tarantula food because these guys, for one, Unlike dubias, dubias are so annoying. They just keep burrowing into substrate when you feed the tarantulas and they play dead. That's the worst. Tarantula sense movement. So when the dubia, you toss in dubias and the dubias play dead, tarantulas are, they're pretty much clueless. As for these guys, look at them. They're just all running around the place. So as soon as you drop them into the tarantula's enclosure, they'll just start running around. And that will excite the tarantula. So the tarantula will chase them. It's pretty cool to watch. And these guys, I would say they are something like crickets because crickets don't burrow as well. So yeah, they make great feeder insects. I would say these guys are the best, well in my opinion, the best feeder insects for tarantulas. Not so much for like leopard geckos because leopard geckos, I don't know. I mean, they probably would work and probably would eat these guys, but leopard geckos, now nah, I don't use these for leopard geckos. These are just for the tarantulas and maybe sometimes my frogs. You guys remember my tree frog? Yep. He loves Turkestan roaches. Another pro to these feeder insects is that they do not harm or attack the tarantula. Even if the tarantula is in molt, these guys will not go and bite or eat the tarantula. Well, at least not from my experience. I've never seen these guys do that. I've left one in a tarantula's enclosure. Well, I wasn't aware that the tarantula was going to molt. But yeah, it was feeding day. I left one of these with the tarantula. And then the next day I went, tarantula freshly molted upside down. And these guys were still running around the enclosure. If you were to put a cricket in there, your tarantula, yeah, you're not going to see it the next day. So that is why... 
these turkey stun roaches are one of the best feeder insects. The cons, well, they smell. They, they, they don't have the most pleasant smell out there, but they're not as bad as crickets. But they still have their own unique smell. I wouldn't say it stinks, but it's not pleasant at the same time. I guess that is pretty much it of what I want to say for these guys. If you guys want to get into tarantulas, definitely try to get these feeder insects. They're, they're great. They don't even bite. You know those house cockroaches, the American German cockroaches? Those bite and it's not fun. Crickets bite, not fun either. But these guys, they are, I would say, they're pretty friendly. They're, it, it's not something you're going to say about roaches that they're friendly, but they don't bite and that's good enough for me. So now I'm going to go and prepare their new enclosure or tub. I don't know, what you call it? Okay, never mind. We'll make it simple. We'll call it an enclosure. Let's go set up the enclosure for these guys. If you've watched my Dubia Roach Care video, the one that I uploaded like, I don't know, several months back, you'll probably have a rough idea on how to keep roaches. And yeah, I'm gonna have to film fast because the clouds are coming back. So, Turkistan roaches, you, you keep them pretty much the same as you would keep Dubia roaches. Nothing much of a difference. Okay, what you want is basically a tub. You want a big enough tub to fit several hundred roaches, even a couple thousand. Now, roaches don't need a really massive enclosure. They usually clump up together. That's, that's how they find each other to mate and, I don't know, produce offspring, I guess. But you can't just get the roaches and just throw them in and call it good. You're gonna have to lay like something for them to climb on and what are you going to use for that these things eight crates are excellent for this purpose so what you want to do basically is you want to stack them up vertically so basically you want to just line them up like this along the way of the enclosure if you don't have enough eight crates you can always line them up this way it depends on how you want to lay out your roach bin you may be wondering why don't i just put it down flat it'll be much easier right well you can but the thing is, look at this. Roach poop all at the bottom becoming nasty. And that is the exact same reason why we don't put egg crates flat because if the roach poop collects onto the egg crate, look at this, it's wet, right? It's, it's really damp and disgusting and gross. It's just wet. So what happens when you put wet stuff on paper material, hmm? That's right, the egg crate will start to have holes, I mean, moisture collecting the weight of the poop you may think roach poop is not heavy but a lot of it on paper material when it's damp it gets pretty heavy so it'll go through and it'll pretty much it'll destroy the egg crate quicker so that's basically the only reason why we stack them up vertically because well the poop will just fall to the bottom of the enclosure which is plastic and something damp like poop won't destroy the plastic so yeah why am I even explaining all these? I'm not a poop expert. All right, so that is the really wind. Wow, so awesome. Not awesome for the video though, but who cares, right? So now the bin is prepared. This place we'll use for food. I'll, I'll pretty much just feed them fruits, I guess. And that is pretty much the Roach Hotel. And trust me, this is able to house hundreds and hundreds of Turkistan roaches, yep. In these few egg crates, it's gonna happen. It is time for these guys to go meet their new enclosure. Oh yeah, before I put them in, I want to mention that you're supposed to keep the enclosure as dry as possible. You want to do that because when it's moist, mold. Yep, you heard me right. Mold. I hate mold. You guys probably know that. I hate, hate, hate mold. And mold, when it comes to these um, paper stuff, when it gets damp, mold will start to grow and that can wipe out your entire roach colony even lesser than a week to be honest and you don't want that happening trust me you don't want it so look at that tell me that's not gross i'm not gonna be touching that okay so now i'm not gonna be putting this look at this it's so oh i'm not gonna be putting this into here i'm just gonna be getting this and just knocking the roaches off so they can i don't know get into their drier enclosure there are quite a few of them now not many males the males are these ones with the wings you can see this little guy is a male not many of them to be honest i think there's only two wow hopefully the babies will survive and become males oh no down you go down you go look at that they're all happy look at that 
they're all exploring their new enclosures. Whew. Let's go. Woohoo! I think this is the last egg crate. Yep. Oh, what is this? It's a cabbage. It's a cabbage. A gross, gross cabbage, you guys. Nope, nope, nope. All right, you guys, go meet your new enclosure. I mean, get get settled in. Let's go. Ooh, you'll definitely enjoy this enclosure much better than what you were in previously. Look at them all climbing up already. They're so excited. So excited to get into the new enclosure. All right, come on, guys, let's go. Oh, there, there's dead ones. There's a dead male. No. Looks like there's only one male in here. Oh, man. This colony is going to take a while to establish. What is this? Oh, gross. That is gross. What on earth is that? Yeah. Anyways, I don't, I don't want to keep this video too long because for one, the wind is not allowing me to film properly. And secondly, look at the sky. Rain is coming. So yeah, that will be it for today's video. If you have any questions regarding roaches, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't covered everything here. It's just, I've just scratched the surface. So if you have any questions regarding these roaches or dubia roaches or hissing cockroaches, just drop it in the comments. I'll see if I can help you. And if I can't, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other people in the comments that will reply your question. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. You guys take care. Peace.